Okay, students, in this video, we're going to look at making a blueprint that actually has some programming in it. So I'm going to clean up my space a little bit here. I'll leave one. Uh, and I'm going to start a blueprint from scratch. So in my blueprint drop down menu, I'm going to choose new empty blueprint class. Now there are a number of different classes for blueprints, and they basically get more complicated as they go up. You have an actor, which is just a basic object in the world. Our torch here is an actor. Now a pawn is that, but it also can be possessed, which means it takes input. So maybe this is like a simple enemy that chases you or uh, something that's interactable like a switch or anything else in your game. Um, a character is that, but also it can walk around. And then a player controller is that, but it's specifically the player, and it gets player controls and button inputs and all sorts of stuff. And there are some other ones down here, um, including scene, which uh, has the scene transform and can be attached to things. And then your game mode base, which is basically how you program how the gameplay works. For most of these, we're going to be looking at actors, and eventually we may look at pawns. So I'm going to choose actor here. And by default, it creates a nice blueprint folder for me here. And I'm going to call this one uh, Rotator. And sometimes it's helpful to always label these as blueprints. So I go with an underscore and then type blueprint and click OK. And once again, it has opened here uh, in its own window. Now, I like to sort of nest the window up here so I can go back and forth between them like tabs. So here you can see I have my default scene root object, which is this white sphere in the center. And notice it kind of weirdly changes sizes as I zoom in and out, and that's because it's not really a sphere. It's just a point in space. This is our 0, 0 origin. And then I have nothing else in here. Um, and that's because I need to add some stuff. And we're going to add stuff by using this big green Add Component button. All the stuff that we can add to Blueprints is on the left here. We either can add um, variables and functions, or we can add components here at the top. So the first component I'm going to add is going to be a static mesh. And you can see some of the other options of things that we can add, and it goes on for quite a while. And uh, I'm going to add a static mesh. And it adds the static mesh object here beneath my scene root, which means that basically uh, it is a child of it in the hierarchy relationship. So any changes I make to the root affect the mesh. Now, there's still nothing in here because though I've added the mesh object, I haven't told the mesh what it is. So over here on the right, I need to pick from any of the static meshes in my game. I'm going to choose shape cube. Looks pretty good. And then I'm going to change its scale value here to like... 0.1, which gives me sort of a nice flat platform. If I want, I can change the material as well. Let's go with, um, let's, uh, I'm going to use like metal steel. That'll work. Great. So I have a steel metal platform, and here it is. Um, now, the next component I'm going to add is here. This component, uh, if we go down for a bit, is under the movement section. So here you can see there are four different movement sections, and we're going to use rotating movement. Um, floating pawn is basically for floating enemies that sort of chase after you. Uh, projectile is for bullets and things that are like bullets. Uh, and then interp we're going to talk about in another video. So I'm just choosing rotating movement. If you don't want to search for it, you can also just type ROT uh, when you're clicking Add Component, because like everything else in Unreal, it is instantly uh, searchable if you just type into the list. Now, just in adding that, we've already added our programming. If I click this Simulation button in the middle, you will see that our object already spins. Um, and this is just because that's what rotating movement does. And if we look at our little overlay here, it says performs continuous rotation of a component at a specific rate. So if I click it, we can see our options over here. Here's the rate. Right now it is rotating on our Z axis at a speed of 180. And I can increase that or decrease that 
and see how that affects it. I could also make it so that it rotates on a different axis. For this, I'm going to go ahead and leave it as 0, 0, and then 1. Let's make it a little slower. I'm going to make it 100 on the Z. I'm going to go ahead and click Compile and Save. And our simple rotating platform is now finished. I'm going to drag my torch into this newly made Blueprints folder. Move here. And let's look in here and drag out our rotator. Now, some things we could notice about our rotator. One, it feels a little small to me uh, for the character that I have here. And also, if I wanted to make changes to it, I can make the changes out here in our individual rotator. Uh, I could grab the mesh and make it wider. Um, I have to be careful here. I just moved the mesh away from the root, so it'll still rotate uh, around that root, which could actually be kind of cool. I'll move this out here. Um, I could also change the speed or the angle of it, but for now I'm just going to hit play and see. If I look over there, I can see the platform rotates around. I'll try one more time. There we go. And it even gives me physics. Now, what's cool about this is the rotator is exceptionally simple, but I can copy this and use it in different ways. If I want, this could be, uh, I could change the rotating angle on it. And instead, this could be a, a hazard or a trap that the character has to dodge, for example. We look at it here. We can see now it swings by and it could hit us and probably knock me out of the way. It could also just be a prop in the background, um, some sort of windmill or other things. Rotators are really easy just to add to stuff to add a little bit of motion and add some more interesting flair to your design. Uh, in our next video, we'll look at uh, one of the other movement controls.